Alright, I'm making this particular video file right now uh, for prediction purposes because uh, pertaining to some <coughs> statements uh, concerning the little skanked out bums that they're using about 100 feet away. <coughs> First, let me show you what today's date is. Today's date is uh, November 16, 2013. As you can clearly see, my me showing you this video picture of my cell phone. And I'm at this location right here where the big dead tree is, is at and that <coughs> big uh, big dead tree has been videotaped by me on previous occasions okay you just can't see it right now because it's uh, uh, on a different spot in this property now uh, excuse me please I'm a target victim and activist concerning the criminal expeditions of what is known as organized stalking this is a prediction video I'm going to get outside of my tent just for one second, briefly. Alright, now, right over there, about 100 feet away, they set up a hiking area uh, for some skanked out homeless bums that the manager of this expedition is using and more than likely probably paying off with community donations that honest, law-abiding community members make to food banks, uh, churches, charities, and stuff like that. And basically what they're, what they're told to do is, um, hang on one second. <clears throat> basically what they're told to do is basically harass me from a distance. And you know what they did? They even went as far as, they, they not only set up the hike seat, let me just backtrack for a second. When I first moved to this area, one full year ago this month, okay, uh, I was here not even two weeks. And they set up, they started, they had these individuals come. See, where I'm at right now on this property is not the original place I came to on this property. Hold on one second. I need to expose this, this uh, section of this expedition concerning what's been happening to me on this property for multiple reasons. And one of the reasons is, is because I am actually preparing to move from it. And it's taken me quite a, quite a bit of time to move from it because of the preparations I've had to make uh, concerning how I am going to start living once I do move from here. Now let me give you, a, let me give you some information concerning the, the shenanigans they pulled uh, in reference to bringing these little criminal whores that they're using, that the criminal whores are using. They brought basically some homeless people or people who are pretending to be homeless. And I have read other targeted individuals blogs who are stating that he believed that the, this other targeted individual that posted some information on the internet wrote a blog stating that he thinks that they're using people who are pretending to be homeless. That's right. Now hold on one second. Let me light up a cigarette because I just got done doing some administrative work and then these assholes that they set up a couple feet away are starting to play around with their bullshit again. For the last seven days, they have been only heard from by me concerning where they're at twice. Last night, I tried to listen to my uh, radio show that I listen to every night, and they were literally, I had literally had to turn the radio up a little bit louder than I usually have it because they were literally yelling gang stalking. And let me tell you another thing which I haven't completely figured out yet how they're doing it. When I have this radio on and I'm listening to it in reference to how they usually had been harassing me every day, okay, up until about seven days ago when they miraculously disappeared for a while, I'd be listening to my radio at night at a real low volume, okay? <clears throat> and so what they did was they started yelling, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, oh my God, nonstop repeatedly from a distance. And they were also doing other things creating what is known as, uh, uh, well, basically arguing and lacing the conversations of the statements of the arguing with dialogue that's meant for me to hear. Now, I'm eventually going to make a video concerning that because what I want to be able to do first is find some uh, information online to see if any other targeted individual is being harassed in this way. And if I don't find it, it's not. it doesn't mean that, that, um, that, any other targeted individual is not being harassed in this way. It's just it just means that that those specific targeted individuals might have chose not to include it in their blogs, out of fear that it could be used against them, because these expeditions are designed to call you crazy, flat out, literally. So let me just light up my cigarette here real fast, and uh, this is actually a necessary video.
that needs to be made because it needs to be known the bullshit that I have to live through on a daily basis, not just along, along all of my routes, but as, as a result of where I'm living at as well. If the, in organized stalking and gang stalking expeditions, one of the main, main, main methods of gang stalking is to rent apartments that are adjacent to a target. So they can harass the hell out of the target when the target's at home in their apartment. Hold on a second, let me show you something. I'm going to try and see if I can find it as I'm talking to you. i got two books right now in my possession. Both of them written by organized stalking targets. And in one of the books, it literally talks about running apartments that are adjacent to targets. And I made a, I made my own personal table of comments. A con, a, my, I made my own personal table of contents. Let me just show you the name of the book, just in case I... Let me just show you the name of the book real fast. The Invisible Crime by Mike Pitubel. And this is the other book, Electronic Torture, Electronic Rape, Gang Stalking at the Post Office. Written by a... a Jewel Crayon. Now, in this book, I, I once I after I bought it and I started reading it, uh, I made my own table of contents in reference to specific things that he wrote in the book that stuck out for me. And let me just review them really fast to see if I made a particular notation concerning what page it states on that they rent. Because uh, he even t uh, states it as well that they rent apartments next to targets as well. Uh, let's see, let me just scan through this while I'm talking to you really fast. Um, as a result of me moving here in very, it was either very late October or early November 2012, what I did was I, I actually set up my original hiking area over there, close by where they're at, because they weren't there yet. And then within 10 days of me moving here, I started noticing a couple times early in the evening and then a couple times in the morning somebody using a rake to rake out an area that's on the other see because where my tent's at right now is on level ground and then if you went about five seven eight feet away it, there's a little a little crevice to where you got to walk down it and then about 15 feet away from that is a little ravine where the uh, when it rains and the uh, rainwater comes down the hill and then goes into this little ravine they're on the other side of the ravine about 100 feet away from me but originally they would have put their hiking area within 30 feet from mine because I was originally hiking over there when I first came to this area in November 2012 at first when I saw them raking, raking away the area I thought it was just an area neighborhood neighbor that was coming down here and doing you know uh, community landscape work to keep this area nice and clean and the reason why I did not know it was not a neighbor was because when they started clearing away their area I took down my tent because I was planning to go to Yucca Valley, California, which is what I did for a week. That's right. And then when I came back, well, well let me just put it this way. Let me just state it this way um, in reference to how it happened. When I left for a week, it was December 6, 2013. <coughs> I left for a, uh, a week, I mean December 6, 2012, and I came back on December 13, 2013. When I was gone for that week, it rained here. And when it rains, all the water comes gushing down through specific little uh, uh, dugout little funnels that then the water drains through and it goes up and into the ravine and then the ravine drains out, you know, down the road, okay? And so when I came back, I noticed that the water that had come up down and through here, how it, like, it, it's, it's like a funnel and then it opens up into a mouth in reference to how it funnels through here and then it just widely dispersed. It widely dispersed into the area where my tent was originally set up at. So when I came back and seen that all the bushes and bark, tree bark in every way had been washed away, I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to camp right here at this location, okay? Plus, while I was noticing that, I noticed that somebody had set up their tents and everything over there. So they originally intended to harass me 30 feet from where I was living at at that time. That's right. So what they're basically doing, and then what they did, uh, like in the last four or five months, is they, they cleared a little ledge from their hiking area to where at the end of the ledge that they cleared would, a, would be able to enable them to stand on the edge of that lab to say certain things to keep me up at night and to harass me. Okay, now hang on one second. 
All right, now I'm uh, so we're gonna see if any event transpires at this hiking area that causes the police to be called because they're acting too loud or crazy or that their dog's barking because they have to make it appear that the reason why the property owner and or police is approaching me is because somebody was heard or saw coming in or going out of here or somebody being heard because in order for a targeted individual to be caused to move which means in order for a targeted individual to be evicted the police have to have an or and or property owner have to have a legitimate appearing reason to know why you're here now, in my possession right now, I have over 700 separate audio files of individuals getting around me and saying, Gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalker, gang stalk, oh my god, crazy, weird, gang, gang stalk, gang stalk. And, um, uh, in my possession. And it's the same exact thing they're doing. Now, at night, when I, when I quietly try to listen to my radio programs, they start arguing. And I already know that when they're arguing concerning some of the things they're saying to each other as they're arguing they're trying to make it appear that they're that well let me just let me just put it to you this way hang on one second this book right here talks about how they rent apartments that are adjacent to targets causing the targeted individual to, in order to harass them they will also gang stalk a targeted individual to multiple motel rooms that's right. Do you want, and this is the fourth hiking area I've been gang stalked to. Now these are just idiots that are being used, told what to do and how to do it, how to act, what to say, how to even do it, okay, in order to cause the targeted individual to hear it. Just like they're getting on all my routes and saying gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalk, oh my god, gang stalk, in that way, nonstop, repeatedly. Or engaging in physical gestures for me to see. Because they want you to either see it or hear it. That's right. Now these criminal skanks that they're using 200 feet away, they're nothing but the neighborhood low-life bums that they're using who are cheaply bought off. They're told how to act, what to say, how to do it, and, wh and whether they're told why to do it or not is irrelevant. Okay, but they know they're involved in gang stalking because they're literally yelling gang stalking. That's their way to remind me that I'm a victim of this crime by constantly repeating around me everywhere I go. Now. In order for a targeted individual, basically what it's done, what it does, it's, it's basically done to totally destroy the quality of a person's peace concerning where they're living at. It's harassment, okay? In order to keep the targeted individual mentally preoccupied about it as a result of having to hear it and or see it, and or see it, that's right, and then to try to label the target as being crazy for what they're factually actually experiencing. Because these criminal whores are doing it from a distance, which makes it extremely hard for my tape recorder. my tape recorder? For my tape recorder to pick it up. I got it set here somewhere. Uh, right here. Okay. Now what I what I do is catch the gang stalking of me along my route with this and the video camera I'm making this video picture with. But since they're at such a distance, it's hard for this tape recorder to clearly pick up what they're doing. That's right. Now. Uh, so my name is Leslie Williams, and I'm, I'm trying. What I'm basically trying to do is keep a record concerning what is factually happening to me everywhere I go, including at my hiking areas. Okay, because the whole goal for them is to keep you mentally attentive to negative statements about you, even about you. Okay, let me give you a case in point concerning possible scripts that can, can be perpetrated around a targeted individual. Hang on a second. They break into targeted individuals' homes and steal things and then replace them later, move things around, uh, t take things uh, out of the refrigerator, throw them on the floor. This guy even talks about how they walked into his apartment, broke into his apartment, and tore the blinds off his window and threw them on the floor. This book was written in 2000, either 2010 or 11. I got a blog online right now that states that that's what they did in, in my last apartment that I rented between 2009 and 2010. To an exact literal T. That is done to put you in a feel to put you in a victimized mindset that because your your privacy and your personal space is being invaded because they broke into your home. Okay? So if that is done to put you in a frightened mindset and the harassment that is perpetrated against you in an apartment building is designed to put you in a hostile, threatening uh, environment, atmosphere, okay, to keep you mentally attuned, att attentive to it. 
okay? So, are they arguing from a distance and saying things? They're using two people, like, it's a, it's a woman and a man, okay? And basically what they're doing, are they doing, are they saying specific things to create a hostile environment by creating drama type of atmospheres through the arguing and the statements they make in the arguing are designed for me to hear and some of it is about concerning me. That's why those yell gang stalking before they start arguing to get my attention so I'll hear what they say. This is how gang stalking operates. This is done to let you feel like you have no peace. It's done to even get the body to physiologically respond to it because the people are arguing around you. You don't know, really know what's going on. Or why, you know, why they might be really arguing or what they might be capable of. You know, you don't know if a fight's ready to break out or if they got weapons or what, what might be going on. This is all done to put you in a fearful mindset that something's going to happen to you and or your property. That's right. They've literally gotten outside of my tent in the middle of the night and have walked literally right outside my tent and called me a bitch. I had to put up uh, different types of... Um, uh, tree branches and bushes and stuff so that if they try to come close to the tent I'll hear them moving the tree branches uh, 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 in order to get closer to the tent this is literally how I have to live on a daily basis because of the whoredom that the San Diego police are directly connected to go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman exposes gang stalking at SDPD HDQ you'll literally hear individuals getting around me saying gang stalking non-stop just just listen to it they're saying gang stalking gang stalk gang stalker oh my god crazy and weird repeating words and phrases along all my routes is their way to let me know i'm being stalked and the physical gestures and i got gang stalking being set at this hiking location on some audio files so this is just my way to give you an illustration concerning what is happening to me at this specific hiking area and we're going to see if the police and or property owner ever show up here on any date and miraculously they're not here when they appear no names to be uh, recorded ah. no identifications to be made on police reports are these the schemes of gang stalking that's right go to google and um just research these criminalities and this battery is running low right now in this tape recorder so in the last couple seconds of me talking i'm going to try and see if i can find uh that well just get this book the Invisible Crime by Mike Fitzhugh Bell, and you'll flat out see him mentioning that they rent apartments adjacent to targets. If they'll go as far as renting apartments adjacent to targets, gang stalking a target to motel rooms, and renting apartments that are motel rooms that are next to the target's motel room, do you honestly think they won't set up a hiking area right next to a part target? It's the, they operate on the same methods and templates of behaviors practically towards every targeted individual. That's why he wrote it in this book about how they run apartments adjacent to targets. They do it for harassment. Okay, so if this video stops while I'm in the middle of talking, it's because the battery ran out. So, let me see if I can just find it really fast. Uh, I should have I should have made a notation about it because it's, it's, wait a minute, hold it. Uh, man, listen to this, it says, uh, uh, They usually have their own set of keys, but also a proficient at pick, picking locks and by pack, bypassing security systems. Okay? I say he's talking about them breaking into his apartment. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if we can find it here real fast. Okay, hold on. Listen to this. Well, listen to what he says. I started looking for another apartment in Los Angeles. Before I moved, I was still very frightened about the possibility of someone coming back into my apartment. So every night, I would barricade the front door with couches and furniture so no one would be able to enter while he was sleeping. Then each morning, I would have to pull all the furniture back where it belonged. It was, it was a pain to do this every day, but it was better than the alternative of being victimized again. I used to have to do that in one of my apartments in Michigan. I had to put bottles on the doorknobs 
So in case they came into my apartment when I was sleeping, the, the bottle would fall as a result of the doorknob being turned. So it's not breaking into your apartment, even when you're in it. Okay. Uh, wh uh, what does that tell you? Uh, listen to this. Each day that I passed by, I became more and more frustrated with being there. And the sixth day, my sister in San Diego, California called... Oh, wait a minute. That was something else. Sorry. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, it doesn't seem that I can find it, like, just by flipping through the pages and looking for it really fast. But, um, I think that you can get the gist of what I'm saying. It's literally mentioned in this book how they rent apartments adjacent to you. Now, if you go to Google and type in gang stalking or organized stalking and cross-reference it to each description in this video concerning them running apartments adjacent to you, harassing you at apartment buildings, entering your apartment, uh, gang stalking you to motel rooms, then you conclude the factual reality that if they'll do all of this, do you honestly think they won't gang stalk a target to a target, uh, to a hiking area? Think again. Okay, I gotta go. Let's see if any problems transpire concerning me, about me, towards me, around me, or against me on this, at this property where I've been hiking at for one full year, and I got the video files to prove how long I've been living here. Alright, I gotta go. My birds are here. I gotta feed them. Alright, I appreciate you listening. I'm a human trafficking target in San Diego, California, La Jolla. And I'm a good woman. I'm not involved in any illegal or criminal activity whatsoever. I'm not a threat to myself or others, and I'm not mentally ill. This is just a video file that I'm making on the fly to give you an illustration concerning what's still happening to me in San Diego County as a result of me being a target victim and activist concerning the criminal expeditions of organized stalking. Thank you.